I use it for the purpose of trying to protect children from being castrated and mutilated. That's one of the things I try to do. You don't use it to get clicks on your Let's stay publication? Well, are you using it right now to try to get clicks with this interaction? On, no. I, 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 I really They're like, like chuckling. They're like, bro, this isn't an internet debate. Get clicks on what? He's like a joke to them. This is actually hysterical. I love this. This, by the way, is how everybody should treat Matt Walsh. Well, you made a lot of misrepresentations and, and characterizations in your comments. So I think it's fair to, for me to question your background. What are the misrepresentations? Let me finish, please. You're recognized Representative Clements. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> they literally brought the hammer down on him. <laughs> Order in the court, Matt. Shut the f up. <laughs> court in session. God damn. Matt is getting, he's actually getting brutalized in like the most calm way also. says conservative pundit Matt Walsh testified yesterday in front of Tennessee's House Health Committee about a bill that would ban minors from receiving puberty blockers and other gender affirming care. So obviously uh, following in line with all these other states that are banning possibly life-saving treatment because they're um, Neanderthals who don't understand basic science, Tennessee is now following suit and Matt Walsh has decided to chit chat with him about this. So they brought in a big brain expert. Uh, not an expert on trans people, but an expert in being a bigot. And they brought on Matt Walsh. This is a clip called Matt Walsh Clashes with Tennessee Democrat in debate about gender affirming treatment for minors. Well, I'm ready to see Matt Walsh get clashed around. Let's go, buddy. Mr. Walsh. Hey, Mr. Walsh, uh, if you would mind, uh, Matt, thank you for being here. You're recognized. Just a quick question for you. We've heard in the news last week and even today that it's pro-life to vote against this bill. We've heard that um, suicides are prevalent and uh, suicide has impacted my family, so I'm sensitive when I hear something like that. I, I've, I've read some of the stuff that you've done and I was wondering, can you speak to the statistics of mental health and suicidal tendencies for the people who have gone through transition or for people who have not? In your studies from what I've read, can you, can you speak to that? Mr. Sure. Walsh, you recognize <laughs> Sure. Uh, well, the claim that uh, you know doing the chemical castration drugs or surgery or hormonal intervention, the claim that this prevents. So keep in mind, right off the bat, he is poisoning the well when he says chemical castration drugs. What he's talking about there are puberty blockers, and this is because puberty blockers pause puberty. However, if you give puberty blockers or the same medication uh, in much higher doses it can lead to a form of, yes, chemical castration. This seems to be like a mind-boggling fact for conservatives to wrap their little pea brains around. The fact that medicine can be good, but the wrong dose of medicine can be bad. Apparently they just, they don't understand this. Uh, every time they pop their Tylenol, they forget the fact that if they were to take 50 Tylenol pills instead of just the, the prescribed two, well, then they might die. But nobody calls Tylenol the death pills, and nobody should be calling puberty blockers the chemical castration drugs. Again, chemical castration can occur if this drug is used in far uh, greater dosages and whatnot. This is not happening on minors. The medication is being prescribed accurately to put a pause on puberty and then safely resume puberty if that is what the adolescent desires later on in life. That's it. They cannot fathom the fact that medication can actually be beneficial, but too much medication can be bad. It's like they don't understand it. Suicide or drugs or surgery or hormonal intervention, the claim that this prevents suicide or uh, has uh, positive psychological effects down the line is utterly, totally baseless. Um, there are Utterly and totally baseless. There has been repeated studies on this. There was a study done in, was it Sweden? that tracked trans people over 40 years and found that there was no increase in suicidality for trans people. And for trans women, the suicide, uh, suicide rate went down. They still had a higher than average suicide rate due to discrimination and whatnot. But tracking trans people from the 1970s till 2017, there was no increase in suicidal ideation. So this bizarre idea that one, it's going to increase suicide is bullshit. And two, that there's no long-term study is just, he's unironically making stuff up. Let's go ahead and pull it up just for, you know, for funsies. 
Trends in suicide death risk in transgender people results from the Amsterdam Cohort of Gender Dysphoria Study, 1972 to 2017. This study explored the overall suicide death rate, the incidence over time, and the stage and transition where suicide deaths were observed in trans people. Conclusion, we observed no increase in suicide death risk over time and even a decrease in suicide death risk in trans women. However, the suicide risk in transgender people is higher than in the general population and seems to occur during every stage of transitioning. It is important to have specific attention for suicide risk in the counseling of this population and in providing suicide prevention programs. Okay, well, 40 years, no suicide increase. Apparently, that's just Not a real study, I think, because Matt Walsh decided it's not. Let's look at some other ones as well. Now, this only did look at 104 transgender and non-binary youths. Okay. Findings. In this prospective cohort of 104 transgender and non-binary youths age 13 to 20 years, receiving gender-affirming care, including puberty blockers and gender-affirming hormones, was associated with 60% lower odds of moderate or severe depression and 73% lower odds of suicidality over a 12-month follow-up. Okay, so now we have two studies here, all fairly good follow-ups over the course of 12 months, 40 years, you know, but apparently Matt Walsh has decided that um, these studies don't identify as legitimate studies, so he's ignoring them and saying there's no evidence to support these claims. He's just making stuff up. He's a liar. Um, There are no credible long-term studies that bear that out. And one of the reasons for that- Okay, so I guess the Amsterdam cohort isn't credible because, because why, Matt? Did you just decide this one day? Listen, dude, I know that like your wife never wants to go near you because you're a creepy fucking perv, but just if you're deprived of happiness in your own life doesn't mean you need to do that for everybody else, okay? Live and let live is that there couldn't possibly be any credible long-term studies because we've never done this to kids on this scale ever before in history. So Okay, so credit where credit's due. He's saying long-term studies for the case of children. So it's true, though, that the suicide ideation uh, study over the 40-year, the the Swedish cohort one, the 40-year one, was looking at adults. So that's fair. But, I mean, we just also looked at the other study of the 104 transgender and non-binary youth over a 12-month follow-up. And there was not only... Uh, a decrease in suicide ideation, there was a 70% decrease in depression. This is promising. From the American Academy of Pediatrics, pubertal suppression for transgender youth and risk of suicidal ideation. This is the first study in which associations between access to pubertal suppression and suicidality are examined. There is a significant inverse association between treatment with pubertal suppression during adolescence and lifetime suicidal ideation among transgender adults who ever wanted this treatment. These results align with past literature, suggesting that pubertal suppression for transgender adolescents who want this treatment is associated with favorable mental health outcomes. This current, uh, shall we say, crop of children, they are the guinea pigs. This is, this is all experimental. We're sort of trying it out on them to see if it works. Uh-huh. Um, now, they have attempted a few times to do studies. And the interesting thing is that the World Professional Association of Transgender Health, WPATH, which is a radical far-left pro-trans organization, they commissioned... WPATH... <laughs> Okay. Yep. Any institution that doesn't support your feelings and uh, re reinforce your uncomfortable contempt for trans people is overrun by wokeness, far left, progressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know the cope, Matt. In a study to try to prove that um, that hormones and puberty blockers uh, uh, decrease suicide rates among uh, trans uh, trans identified youth. And even in their own study, they found that they couldn't, they, couldn't, they couldn't prove it. They couldn't make that link because it's just not possible to do. I'm going to look this up. WPATH puberty blockers study. WPATH respond to the New York Times article, They Paused Puberty, But Is There a Cost? Published on November 14th, 2022. The methods of the author of this piece come up short in their interpretation and application of available data. The article supports inaccurate narratives that puberty blocking medicines are conclusively harmful to long-term bone density or other health outcomes. The cited bone expert from Mayo Clinic is an adult endocrinologist who does not work clinically with transgender youth and is only a single publication on transgender health. This publication is not a research study, but a brief review commentary on the issue of bone density. I don't know what he's talking about. Where is the WPATH study? One of the real supports for any new therapy is an outcome analysis. Because of the controversial nature of sex reassignment surgery, this type of analysis has been very important. The sample, 16.9% reported that they ever wanted pubertal suppression. Uh, Okay, well, if anybody in chat (laughs) 
knows where I can find this. I have looked everywhere, all, all over here, and I'm not seeing where WPATH did some big study and then have to like walk it back or say that it didn't actually work. I, I don't know. I don't know where this happened. He might be imagining it again, just like he's imagining that his wife loves him and he has a father who approves of him. The number of trans identified youth has skyrocketed in recent years. We're talking about exponential 10x, 20x growth. Just huge. So about that, there's a, a couple things you should address. Is first of all, we're obviously going to see an uptick in people who are identifying differently as our society becomes more accepting. That's just going to happen. That is a natural consequence of becoming more accepting. We saw this happen even with interracial marriage. After it was legalized and then became socially accepted, interracial marriage spiked massively. Like, no shit. But the other thing you got to remember is that identifying LGBT youth, well, LGBT, you know, people make fun of it for having LGBTQIA plus XY, you know, all that shit. It's because LGBT, that umbrella, captures more identities now. Now non-binary is being counted in there. Now unsure is being counted in there. Maybe gender fluid is being counted in there. You're not talking about a, a rise of people who are transgender with gender dysphoria seeking treatment. You're talking about a rise of people who just identify differently. There are more identities that are understood. There is a larger umbrella to capture uh, the, the amount of people who identify differently. So you're going to see the numbers get larger. You're going to see an inflation of those numbers. But this isn't something to be scared of like what Matt Walsh wants. This is just how math works. Huge numbers have, 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 uh, have, have increased. And what we hear from the pro-trans side is that, uh, well, this is not a social contagion. It's just that, you know, there's always been this many trans people. It's just that they were not in an affirming uh, environment before in history, and so they couldn't come out. And now for the first time, trans people uh, have, have the ability to live their truth, so to speak. Well, if that's the case, and there have always been these sort of like millions of trans people, and if it's also true that if we don't affirm them, that it would cause them to commit suicide, then we should be able to look back in history and find just this unbroken, incredible epidemic of children mysteriously killing themselves because they weren't being affirmed as trans. And what you find is that that didn't exist. I mean, the, the, the youth suicide rate has increased exponentially alongside trans affirmation. So what? trans Do you even know what you're talking about? First of all, is that true? Uh, youth suicide stats, 50s until now. The increase in suicides was higher among males than females, as was the increase in the suicide rate. The largest increase in the rate of suicide occurred among males. <laughs> so <laughs> I need to know if they've actually increased, first of all. And second of all, you're, you're saying like right when the trans stuff happened, you realize this is the first generation to grow up on social media, right? You realize that, right? Social media demonstrated repeatedly to cause depression, anxiety, isolation, loneliness. There are so many fucking problems with people living their lives in this virtual little Facebook world now? Or you're comparing the youth and the suicide rate now with social media and saying, what about the trans people? Ooh. The world also went up in population, Matt. Yeah, of course. So trans affirmation caused Wait, alongside the trans affirmation. So trans affirmation causes the suicide rate, not the other way around. The last thing I'll note is that- uh What? You're kidding, right, Matt? Not even you're this fucking stupid. What? He's literally doing the suicide go up, trans people more accepted, so trans is causing suicide. Unironically doing this right now. Matt, okay, hey, here's one for you, buddy. The suicide rate is increasing. Simultaneously, you're gaining subscribers on YouTube. <gasps> Matt Walsh is increasing suicide. Even that would be more accurate because I'm ready to go jump off of a fucking bridge after hearing this drivel come out of this dude's disgusting face. Are you kidding me right now, Matt? Are you this dumb? Do you know how many things you could look at? Guys, did you know the amount of people who drink water has increased? <gasps> and so is the suicide rate. Curious. 
Did you know that the silent majority voted for Trump in 2016 and now suicide rates are increasing? Curious. What are you talking about, you fucking idiot? The suicide rate among trans-identified people is, is sky high. It remains sky high. All the data shows this. It remains sky high even after surgery. And in fact, in the most reliable data that we have, it's uh, years after surgery when suicidality is the highest for trans-identified people. So first and foremost, why is that? There are social reasons why this is, Matt. Uh, we're kind of in a weird paradoxical stage right now where you do have a more accepting side of things. But as always, when there is a, a uprising of acceptance and progress, you also get the negatives to flare up as well. So this happened with the civil rights movement, for example. You had people who were becoming louder and louder and louder about, hey, we deserve rights. We are human beings just like everybody else, and we deserve to be treated equally. And with that also came a flare up of racists saying, fuck, no, you don't. This is what happens when progress is made. You see an uptick of people who are accepting. And in response to the, the growing acceptance, you have a negative uprising. A bunch of people like Matt Walsh and other chuckle fucks who are determined to negatively impact trans people. So you sort of have this weird paradox where on one side, you're seeing more trans people because there's more acceptance, but you're also still dealing with the negative social elements from people like Matt Walsh, which is contributing to the suicide rate. So I recognize that it sounds contradictory, but that's because this is the real world. This is how it works. So if you have somebody who's really accepted and they're going up and they're going up and then they get a little older and then they start getting shat on or discriminated against, they're no longer in this accepting environment. Yes, that could bring them back down. That could worsen their mental well-being. So there's that. Second of all, we again looked at the Amsterdam cohort, Matt. 40 years, hundreds of trans people followed over the course of 40 years, no increase in suicide risk. No increase, you stupid subhuman degenerate. You're just lying right now. Where is the most reliable data that shows the increase in suicide later on? Is he talking about the one Swedish study that has been so heavily debunked that even the author of the study herself has come out and been like, conservatives are repeatedly abusing my study. This is not what it said. All it found is that trans people have higher suicide rates on average and they need more better treatment, etc. yada, yada, yada. Like, isn't that all that study found? Of course, they're going to call it the most reliable study because it affirms their fifis. Any further questions for Mr. Walsh while we're out of session? Uh, Mr. Hammer, or, uh, Representative Hammer. Thank you. Um, I found it, uh, thank you, Mr. Walsh. I found it interesting. One of our uh, uh, people uh, testified today that they uh, had their gender affirming surgery at 16. And I know uh, you in former comments mentioned uh, this uh, on your blog. At about 16, you're an adult who is mature and can make decisions. Uh, you're that at 16. I don't care what anybody says. Even going so far as to say, you know, 16 people, uh, when you're 16, you should be married and, uh, and could be pregnant or should be pregnant. Um, so I'm curious. If they're dissing Matt right there. And you know what? I hate Matt Walsh with like a burning, fiery passion, okay? But at the same time, I mean, he, he didn't really say that. That's not what he said. Like that, that is actually a misinterpretation of the quote. But, so like for the sake of honesty, that is kind of, that, that is a little bit of a dishonest framing. The worst thing he said was that at 16, you're an adult. That's what he said that I think was really concerning. He didn't say that like 16 year olds should be married having kids. But yeah, they, they know him personally. So they're, <laughs> they're going all in. Get him. Could be married and uh, and could be pregnant or should be pregnant. Um, so I'm curious if 16 is uh, a uh, an adult in your view. Uh, why does this bill have uh, the uh, minor de defined as? Oh shit! I didn't even think of that. That is a good point. So 16 year olds are an adult according to Matt Walsh. Enough so that if they want to marry other 16-year-old guys and get married and have kids, Matt's okay with that. He didn't say they should. He didn't say they should be marrying older men. He said that if they want to settle down and get married and have kids at like 16, they can or they th th that would be beneficial for society. Or He said something. It was still yikesy, sure. But I did not think about the hypocrisy there. That's true. 16 is an adult, according to Matt Walsh. But at the same time... 16 year olds are too young to know their gender. Man, this dude just flamed Matt and he hasn't even responded. Let's let's hear what Matt says. How are you going to come back from that one, bitch? 18. Uh, Mr. Yeah, well, that's, uh, recognized. yeah, that's that's a hit piece you took from Media Matters uh, from something when I was a, a radio host uh, 13, 14 years ago, in my early 20s. 
Uh, it's also not an accurate reflection of what I actually said. Um, I was talking about uh, the fact that people tended to marry young historically, and that's all that that was about. Um, how does that relate to, the, to this? Subject? Oh, he's slipping. He is slipping out. He is weaseling so bad. I was just talking about people when they were younger getting married, you know? Hmm? What about the second half of the question, Matt? Just curious of your definition of, of if you feel like people are adults at 16, should... Well, uh, people are adults is... at 18, uh, but actually they're... You're, you're... He's walking it back. He said verbatim, at 16, you're an adult and I don't care what anybody says. That is just the truth, that you're an adult at 16. Uh-oh. Let's pull up the clip. Matt Walsh. Trying to weasel and worm his way right out of this one. Uh-uh, not on my watch. Girls are getting married to 17 or 18-year-old guys that are not kids, they're men. Men. Oh. Yes, it's not good that these, that these girls in high school are getting pregnant. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying, though, is that if society was, if, if, if society was different and that we stopped insisting that, that you're a kid until you're 25 and we, and we just deal with the reality that at about 16 you're an adult, who is who is mature and can make decisions? You are that at sixteen. I don't care what anybody says. Oh shit! <laughs> at sixteen, you're an adult, mature enough to make decisions, except not about your gender. Oh shit! My God, Matt, you didn't just suggest it either, man. You were coming down hard. Not only is it creepy as fuck to assume that a 16 year old girl is actually like an adult, this is just completely contradicting what you just said. Did you change your opinion on that one, Matt? Just now? Well, actually, I don't think that anymore. I have matured. I was just a young, dumb adult at the age of 20, okay? Should. Uh, well, people are adults geez. at 18, uh, but actually, your, your brain is not fully developed until you're 25. So we should be having a conversation about. Whether we should even be doing these surgeries to people. No, what is, why are, God, I'm going to try to be nice. Why are you so fucking mentally deficient, Matt? I have heard better arguments made by a fucking manic squirrel. It's true that the brain isn't fully developed until 25. You don't need your brain to be fully developed to the point that you are not developed enough so to be considered an adult and make decisions and be able to actually think through decisions, complex decisions, how that might affect you later on in life. Your brain might not be done developing entirely until 25, but it reaches a point where you're developed enough so to still make mature decisions for your own goddamn life. Okay, um, now that I've explained that as kindly as I can to Matt Walsh, let's continue. So, uh, but actually your, your brain is not fully developed until you're 25. So we should be having a conversation about whether we should even be doing these surgeries to people at 18. Honestly, I think if anything, also Matt Walsh kind of contradicts this because I mean, how old is he? Like 30, 40, whatever, hopefully older and closer to death. I mean, his brain still isn't done developing. Honestly, maybe it's a good thing that his wife isn't fucking him because that might be like rape. But certainly before 18, it's, it's absurd. I mean, do you, do, you, do you think that a 16-year-old can meaningfully consent to having their body parts removed? You, until like five seconds ago, thought that a 16-year-old could meaningfully consent to getting married and having children. Do, do you? No? You got him. We do not. Yeah, we ask the questions. It's not. It's, uh, okay. Representative Hammer, you're recognized. <laughs> Hey, Matt, sorry, this isn't a debate right now, okay? We ask questions, you answer. <laughs> That's it. He's trying so hard to worm out of it. Look at this little bitch. No more questions, okay. Uh, Representative Clemens, you're recognized. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, can you give us a summary of your educational background or your healthcare education experience? Uh -oh. Mr. Walsh, you're recognized. My experience in healthcare? Your educational background. I'm just curious. You 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 yeah. testified as to a lot of your own research. So I'm curious for what purpose you do that and what background you have to qualify you to speak to that. Well, my Mr. background Walsh. that qualifies me to speak to this is that I'm a human being with a brain and common sense, and I have a soul. And so, therefore, I think it's a really bad idea to chemically castrate children. That is my. What is your medical credential here to speak on this? And then he responds by saying, I'm a human being with a brain. First and foremost, it's actually offensive to human beings to classify us with Matt Walsh. So that's the first thing that I find to be offensive. Then he goes on to, I have common sense. W what's common sense, Matt? I just ask these people, next time anybody says, I have common sense, ask them, what's common sense? Because you realize that 
common sense in some areas might be different than common sense in other areas, right? So like common sense here is don't walk across the street until you look both ways. But if you take somebody who's grown up in an area where, I don't know, there's no cars, maybe they like grew up in the jungle or something. Well, for them, common sense is run as fast as you can to the tree over there. Who cares that there's a busy road in front of you? You got to get to that fucking tree where you're safe. Common sense is literally just subjective, arbitrary sense based on whatever you were taught in your own upbringing. There is no such thing as like common sense, like every human being has the same common sense on something. So that's cringe as fuck. And then he follows it up with, I have a soul. Common sense says, if I cannot see it, then it's probably not there. You, we can't see the soul. There's no evidence that a soul exists. Thus far, everything that we have previously attributed to a soul has actually been proven to be a part of the brain. And so you go with, I have common sense too, and I have a soul. Concluding that you have a soul is not common sense, Matt. It's the opposite of it. You fucking ape. I experience. Um, also, I, I did, now it's true, I didn't, I didn't go to college, but I did go to school long enough to learn how to read so I can read the data for myself, and that's exactly what I've done. Another shocking revelation. You can read, Matt? Representative Clemens, you're right. And for what purpose do you um, conduct your research and use this brain of yours? Mr. Walsh, you're recognized. I use it for the purpose of trying to protect children from being castrated and mutilated. That's one of the things I try to do. <laughs> you don't use it Clemens. to... Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You don't use it to get clicks on your Let's state publication? Well, are you using it right now to try to get clicks with this interaction? On, no. I, 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 I really They're like, like chuckling. They're like, bro, this isn't an internet debate. Get clicks on what? Matt's just like, well, I, you're probably streaming this to your Instagram live, aren't you, Senator? Dude, Matt's getting rolled here. I like how he tried to turn it back around on them again because he doesn't understand that it's like, no, you need to just answer the questions. It's not a debate. It's not a back and forth. You're not having a little chit chat, okay? They ask you questions, you respond. And then he tries to say, well, aren't you getting clicks? And you just hear them like laughing in the background at him. He's like a joke to them. This is actually hysterical. I love this. This, by the way, is how everybody should treat Matt Walsh. He's just like a, a deranged, mentally ill child. Smile and wave. Chuckle at him, move on. Clicks on your Let's state publication. It. Well, are you using it right now to try to get clicks with this interaction? <laughs> I, 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 I really like the Mr. idea Walsh. of getting, uh, of, of drawing attention to the fact that this is happening to children. I know you seem to find it very amusing. I don't. Uh, Representative Clements. Roasted. Oh, man. How is the senator going to return to this? It's funny too, because since this thing, after the guy made fun of Matt for possibly trying to get clicks, Matt has posted like five different videos about this. Well, you made a lot of misrepresentations and, and category characterizations in your comments. So I think it's fair to, for me to question your background. What are the base Let me finish, please. You're recognized as Representative Clements. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> they literally brought the hammer down on him. Oh my God. Order in the court, Matt. Shut the fuck up. Identify as a woman for a minute and zip it. Pfft. Court in session. God damn. Matt is getting... He's actually getting brutalized in like the most calm way also. He's trying so hard to, to take control of the conversation when it's not how it works at a health committee panel. Let me finish, please. Can we go back one more time? Question your background. What are the and your base Let me finish, please. You're recognized as Representative Clements. I love it. You know, if you're going to come before a committee and make mischaracterizations and misrepresentations, it's fair game for us to ask you your educational background and your foundational knowledge for making such characterizations. That's, that's my point. So I'm curious about you speaking to the development of the human brain at the, by the age of 25. I seem to recall you advocating on behalf of firearm possession at the age of 18. Do you think let's, that's appropriate? Let's, let's stay on the bill, please. Oh, shit. Ah, okay, I, I appreciate that they're keeping it on the bill, but that, man, they have him on so many different levels here, actually. They actually have Walsh by, like, the throat in this clip. Oh, my God. Even though it was cut off, and I know they're not going to be able to engage in that any further, that was, that was excellent. That's all I got. Okay. Yeah, well, uh, can I respond to that? Representative Mitchell, you're recognized. I can't respond to what Representative yeah, Mitchell's th recognized. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
So, you know, you, I think your original article. Okay. I, I do kind of think they should let Matt respond, though, to that. I, I like seeing him get rolled, but if you're just not allowed to speak, or if like you're you're literally silenced or muted or whatever, like at some point you're no longer getting steamrolled. You're just forced to sit there and listen to everybody preach at you. So I kind of do wish they'd given Matt uh, the ability to respond. But again, this is a committee uh, committee hearing. This isn't necessarily the next big Discord debate. I think your original article, blog post, or tweet or whatever kind of started this firestorm. So I'm trying. <laughs> Dude, I think your like original like blog or post or whatever the fuck was it on your MySpace? Was it like your little Tumblr blog? I don't, I don't know. Whatever the fuck you posted, <laughs> I just love how they treat him with such not only just contempt, but like like he's not a serious person to them at all. It's actually really hilarious. Post or tweet or whatever kind of started this firestorm. So I'm trying to figure out, you know, where we need to look for these surgeries because I'm still trying to find, you know. The surgeries, because you know the the sponsor of the bill last week, I kind of agreed with him. I said we need to split this bill into two parts. You know, I may agree with him on the surgery part, because I don't think it's happening. So you know, you seem to have started this. So I need your evidence of where these surgeries are occurring in Tennessee. Could you could you give me you know places, times, maybe some names uh, or something that you know yeah. you you know uh -oh. of. Uh-oh. A conservative was just asked for specifics. Remember how conservatives love the, the vague, nebulous platitudes? The protect the kids. Kids shouldn't be chemically castrated. They love the broad bullshit, but the minute you ask for a specific, it's like, um, well, it's happening so much that I can't even think of one specific. Mr. Yeah, my, Walsh, Mr. Walsh, you're recognized. My evidence is the healthcare provider's own words, you know, I I, uh, I outlined Vanderbilt Health and their uh, transgender care and the people that work for that program, their own words, talking about what they do and talking about, for example, um, providing the chemical castration drugs to to adolescent children. Um, as far as surgeries, you know, double wait, giving kids the puberty blockers after they've been confirmed gender dysphoric and they've consented, and their therapists have consented, and their doctors have consented, and their parents have consented, and they've been persistent in gender dysphoria for a minimum of six months. Yeah, that's actually a good thing, Matt. I know you think that by lying to people and calling it the chemical castration drugs, for those of us who actually have a brain, we know what these drugs are, and they are largely safe and effective. They've been used on youth for decades, and they're FDA approved in the case of precocious puberty. Mastectomies do happen, and the way that I know that they happen is that after I called attention to this program at Vanderbilt, they said that they were going to stop performing, they were going to put a pause on the program that performs these surgeries on minors. And so if you're... So first of all, double mastectomies are not the same thing as genital reassignment surgery. Second of all, he is correct in one element, which is that uh, it is my understanding that the guidelines allow for the mastectomies to take place around the age of 16, I think. And then obviously it's 18 and older until you can have any kind of like genital reassignment surgery. That does not happen on minors. So double mastectomies on minors, honestly, not a big fan of it. I don't really like that. I think that if you're going to be getting like a surgery like this, probably best to wait until you're the age of 18. I am not of the same opinion as Matt. I don't think that 16 year olds are adults who can consent and make big decisions for themselves, which Matt does think so, by the way. So I think that it's probably the safer bet to wait until 18, sure. However, here's the big caveat. I can recognize this and also be in support of trans people. It's not that hard. Not every treatment is going to be the best. Not every doctor is going to be 100% perfect. No one ever said there's no such thing as corruption. No one said there's no such thing as some of the medical guidelines maybe needing to be fixed. You can recognize all of these problems and still ultimately be in support of trans people, as I am. Matt hates trans people. He has that uncomfortable tummy ache. He gets real gassy when he sees a, a hot trans person walking by. And so for him, he masks it with this other shit. He masks it with, well, the double mastectomies, the surgeries, oh, spooky, spooky. But even if that wasn't happening at all, he would still hate trans people because it's ultimately about what he feels in his tummy 
And he's hiding behind these, again, nebulous sort of the surgeries, the virtue. I'm virtuous because I care about the kids bullshit. But at the end of the day, he just hates trans people. Pausing the program that performs surgeries on minors, then I'm going to assume that the program existed. Otherwise, you couldn't have paused it. So now the exact number of uh, kids who are being subjected to this, I, I don't know exactly. It's really hard to come subjected up with those. Subjected to this. Even the language he's using, like you're not subjected to it if you have consented to it. Numbers, I think because the people doing it aren't really proud of it. And it's, they, there's not a lot of interest on their end to tell us. But I do think that, you know, even one child being horrifically mutilated is too many. So I know that it's more than one. And that's reason enough to put a stop to this, I would say. So here's a big thing that I, I looked into recently, and this is really good for everybody to know, okay? Conservatives, again, they love the spooky words, okay? Chemical castration sounds scary. Mutilation sounds terrifying. That's the one they use the most, the mutilation. So it's good to know what separates the definition of mutilation from the definition of surgery, because the way that they use the word mutilation that would literally account for any time a surgery takes place for virtually any reason. If like a nine-year-old has a cancerous stomach tumor and they have to cut the nine-year-old open to save their life, then according to their version of mutilation, that would be mutilation. That's not mutilation. So mutilation is referring to the changing of one's body, one's body parts, for a reason that is devoid of any medical purpose. It's very specific and it's good to know this so that you can see the difference and then point it out to these dumb fuck conservatives. Now, again, they don't actually care much about the uh, sincere difference of definitions here because, well, a lot of them, especially Walsh and these other, these other cunts are uh, you know, devoid of any real conviction. They're kind of fueled by the big bucks and their hatred and whatnot. But for conservative listeners, a lot of them just hear mutilation and it sounds scary. Mutilation is changing one's body, cutting someone's body, uh, doing some kind of a surgery or, or whatever for no real medical reason, which is funny because by that definition, circumcision would be mutilation. And it's a hell of a lot of these conservatard types who are actually very okay with circumcision. It's religious. Since God said it's okay, it's good. It's good to go. These people are inconsistent because they don't care. Mutilation is cutting someone's body up for reasons that are devoid of medical purpose. If you're talking about somebody who has gender dysphoria and they feel that getting a double mastectomy is the best move forward for bettering their mental health and lowering their likelihood of committing suicide, and this is supported by medical professionals, their own personal doctors, therapists, and their parents, then getting that surgery is not mutilation because there is a significant and provable medical benefit. So it's not mutilation. So shut the fuck up with your brain dead twisting of words. Go back to being the creepy dude hanging out in the high school parking lot. I know that it's more than one and that's reason enough to put a stop to this, I would say. <laughs> okay, really? How come he never uses that logic when we're talking about like gun violence? Don't conservatives mock that logic when it's like, even one child being killed by a gun in school is too many. Don't they make fun of this all the time, but now he's using the exact same form of argumentation when it comes to trans people? Representative Mitchell, you recognize that? Yeah. So, so last week I had an amendment that, you know, we're looking to protect children from abuse. And I also had an amendment to stop cosmetic surgery of rhinoplasty and breast enhancements to minors. How would you feel about that? You know, sure. is that mutilation of children as well under the age of 18? They can't Representative, think for themselves? Representative Mitchell, that's not on uh, the bill that we have. Yeah, it is. It's surgical. I, it's surgical. I, I'm happy to answer that. You are free do. to answer, Mr. Walsh. Okay. Uh, my personal feeling about banning breast enhancements for, for minors? Yes, I, I would be all for, personally, I'd be all for banning that, absolutely. Yeah. Representative Mitchell. Okay, and and so I think the previous representative. Can, what is he even? What are they even talking about? I think I I missed something. If you know, prove that you have no medical background, correct? Uh, no. So so you're here probably just as a public policy. You you're trying to address good public policy, correct? Represent, or Mr. Walsh. Yes. So. I just have to question, you know, some of your public policy 
you know, expertise when, you know, I'm reading here, Singapore is able to have nice things in part because they execute drug dealers. Oh, no. Oh, man. You know it's bad when the Tennessee State House Health Committee whips out a printed piece of paper with a bunch of your tweets on them. Oh, no. Matt, you are so done, buddy. Please, Your Honor, uh, I was, listen, I was drunk, okay? I was just talking a little mad shit on Twitter. Please. <laughs> Singapore is able to have nice things in part because they execute drug dealers by hanging and arrest even petty vandals and thieves and beat them with a cane until they bleed. We don't have nice things here because we aren't willing to do what is required to maintain them. So, you know, with statements like that, Singapore has an even higher suicide rate. Doesn't Japan have one of the highest suicide rates in the world? Holy shit. So there's Matt. Yeah, just cute little tweet talking about how we should be beating people till they're bloody because I, I don't know what happened. They stole a Snickers bar to do what is required to maintain them. So, you know, with statements like that, I kind of have to question your public policy beliefs. And, you know, and you also stated there'd been no studies. Well, I'm sitting here holding a study from the American Academy of Pediatrics uh, from the University of Pittsburgh. Oh, about slammed. The uh, suicidal disparities between transgender and cisgender uh, adults and children. Uh, so I think, you know, before you state things, you may need to know all the facts. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Holy that shit. <laughs> Just calmly roasting the fuck out of him. This is beautiful. Congressman, uh, Chairman Williams, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll make a motion to go back out of session. <laughs> oh, that's how it ends. Just Matt, like, can I respond, please? Don't I get to say something about this? And they're just like ignoring him. He's like the child, you know? Mommy, can I get the toy? Mommy, can I get the toy? All right, Senator Jack, you're up. Please uh, go ahead with your statement. I love this. Man, so they basically just forced him uh, to sit there and listen as they deconstruct his bullshit. And then the very end, can I, can I get a response? They just left him on red. Ghosted, Matt. This was like the next best Comedy Central roast. Seriously, this was great.